Lab manipulations routinely require liquid dispensing over a million-fold range of volumes, from microliters to liters. To help ensure the success of your experiment, you need to be able to measure and dispense those liquids safely, accurately, and reproducibly. To start, we will go over a few ways to measure large volumes. A graduated cylinder is versatile as they come in an array of volumes and each size can measure a wide range. To start, you should determine the volume desired and you can quickly pour around 90% of that volume into the cylinder. Once you've come close to the mark, you should view the meniscus at eye level and slowly add the remainder of the liquid until the bottom of the meniscus is at the desired volume. Volumetric flasks are more accurate than graduated cylinders due to a narrower neck, but are less flexible as they are only marked for a single volume. If you have difficulty viewing the line or meniscus, you can try and place something of a contrasting color, such as a black piece of paper on the other side of the glassware to make it more visible. Volumes in the range of 1 to 25 microliters are commonly dispensed with a glass or plastic pipette, especially when repeated dispensings are necessary. Start by grasping the pipette near the top and snugly place the pipette into the flexible opening of the aid to create an airtight seal. This green pipette aid works by rolling the wheel up or down with your thumb to move a plunger within the pump. As you draw up the desired liquid, try to take your reading with the pipette in a vertical position so the meniscus will lie flat. Here, the same volume is dispensed using a bulb type pipette aid with a tab that is pulled down once to create a vacuum and a lever to control the suction or expulsion of the liquid. When the flow of the liquid slows, the tab can be pulled again to recharge the aid. The black button is used to expel the last drop of liquid left in the pipette. As the pipette used in this demonstration is a blowout pipette, the final drop needs to be expelled as it is accounted for in the volume measured. By dragging the tip along the side of the container, you can ensure that the last drop has indeed been dispensed and is not retained on the surface of the pipette. To accurately measure volumes less than one milliliter requires a micropipette. These come in fixed and adjustable volumes, and the adjustable micropipettes have the range of volumes they can measure clearly marked on their top or side. For this 2 to 20 microliter micropipette, commonly called a P20, the volume adjustment is made by rotating the ridged dial located around the yellow plunger. The clockwise rotation will increase the volume while a counterclockwise rotation will decrease the volume. The numerical display of each micropipette makes it easy to ensure you will be dispensing the proper volume. But as each pipette may have the decimal represented differently, you must become familiar with how to read that value properly. For this P20, the top two digits represent whole microliters, while the last two are for the decimal values. For the P200, you still only have four digits, but the first three are for whole microliters, while only the last one is for fractions of a microliter. For this P1000, all four digits represent whole microliters. To use any of these micropipettes after setting the volume, you must first attach a plastic disposable tip. The liquid to be measured should never enter the pipette itself, only the tip. By firmly pressing the pipette down into the tip, you will create a snug and airtight fit while allowing the tip to be easily removed once it's no longer needed. Each micropipette plunger has two stops, which can be thought of as two springs within the plunger. The first stop utilizes a weak spring and is easy to compress, while the second stop has a firmer spring which is harder to compress. To measure a liquid, you will only be pressing the plunger down to the first stop. This expels a volume of air equal to the volume of liquid you want to measure. Once the tip has been placed into the liquid, the plunger is slowly raised and the liquid is drawn into the tip. When dispensing the liquid, you will push the plunger down to the first stop, then through the first stop to the second stop to blow out any residual liquid. There should be no liquid left in the tip if you have done this properly. 
behind the plunger is an ejector button, which is used to kick off the pipette tip without requiring you to touch a potentially contaminated tip. To complete this demonstration of liquid handling, here are a few commonly made mistakes that should be avoided. Always ensure that a full pipette or micropipette is kept vertical so that the liquid does not run back into and contaminate the device. If you rapidly draw up liquids or do not keep the tip below the surface, you can get air bubbles, which will reduce the volume of liquid held in the pipette. It is also common that a micropipette is pushed down to the double stop and will draw up more liquid than desired, as shown by this tube being emptied and drawing in air bubbles. Finally, for your safety, remember that snugly inserting a glass pipette while holding the middle or bottom of the pipette can violently snap the pipette creating a jagged glass spear aimed directly at your opposite arm.